Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be checking out the Fox 40. If you're familiar with suspension, you know that this fork is the Ferrari of suspension, and of course, the price reflects that. We are going to go over how to install it, and then Cole will ride it and give his first impressions. Enjoy the video. Let's start by taking off the old fork. Loosen the pinch bolts in one side of the axle dust cover. On the other side, unscrew and pull to get the axle out. Next, remove the two bolts holding the caliper to the fork. Continue by loosening the top cap above the stem, followed by the pinch bolts on the triple trees. We can now slide the fork tubes through the triple tree. You can also leave the tubes in the lower tree only and just remove the upper tree. Now, let's remove the handlebars by loosening the four bolts on the front of the stem. Before we remove the triple trees, we need to loosen the two pinch bolts holding the stem to the steerer tube. Now would also be a good time to remove the headlight and the front fender. The pinch bolts holding the triple tree to the stem can be loosened, allowing them to slide off. The two parts we will need from the old fork is the seared tube bearing and dust cover. These are tightly pressed on, so using a flathead screwdriver, pry back and forth in the notch under the dust cover. The fork will need to be flipped back and forth multiple times. Of course, before touching the 40s, we need to wash our hands. We decided to go with the orange lowers, which initially looked faded in shaded lighting, but you can later see how good they look in direct light. This model is for a 27.5 inch mountain bike with a 1 and 1 8 inch straight steer tube and 52 millimeters of rate. Start by loosening the top triple tree on the new fork for test fitment. Before we test fit, however, we need to press on that bearing and seal. Make sure your fork is on something soft. We found that using a PVC pipe and rubber mallet worked well to get the bearing on. Note that you may need to use a punch to get it all the way on. We can now slide the new fork through the headset for test fitment. As you can see, the fork tubes aren't sliding into the upper tree enough, so we will have to loosen the lowers and slide them up more. This is an example with an already cut sear tube so that you can see how you should cut it relative to your spacers. It should be about 1 8 of an inch below the top. After marking your cut spot, make the cut. If you don't have a metal chop saw, you can use a hand saw, just make sure that it is straight. Using a file, clean the burrs that the cut has created so that it can slide smoothly back into the head tube. To make the fork fit correctly, we will need to grind down this manufacturing tab. We use the flap wheel to be sure not to remove too much material. Now using the star nut that came with the fork and the top cap bolt, hammer the star nut down into the tube. This should be about a half inch below the lip. Here's that gap again. This is important so that the fork can suck up a bit when tightening the top cap. The top cap should only be tightened slightly past the point of where there is no more lateral movement in the headset. If you aren't using a direct mount stem, you can put the original stem in place of the spacers. If you are using a direct mount stem, make sure to get a spacer for it or else a headlight won't clear. We can now put the front wheel back on, slide the axle through, and tighten the pinch bolts. If you have watched our brake video, you should know how to center the caliper on the rotor. If you don't, go check it out. The place we will be riding at today is Shotgun Creek in Mohawk, Oregon. It is a motorized only area with no mountain biking trails. It features trails with long, rocky uphills and tight, rooty steep hills, plus everything in between. Perfect for testing the new fork. Before we ride, we like to stretch and hydrate. Alright. So this is a kind of a hilly one. It'll be interesting to see if I can hang with Riley on the sprocket. Even with the 40, that doesn't do much for hill acceleration. 40 helps a little bit more, uh, 
with uh, comfort, especially downhill. Oh. Ugh. Her terrible line choice there. Where are you at? 82? Uh, 79. I'm at 82. Wow. Sprocket might be making a difference. Dude, that's Good steep point. and fast, man. Yeah. Fuck. I wonder. I forget. It's 30. I think 32 is right up here. Yep. Got offline there. Hard to steer when your front end is off the ground. Oh. Right off the bat, the Fox 40 is a massive improvement over the stock forks. Small bump sensitivity is superior. The fork effectively uses all of the travel on big hits, and the rigidity is much better. It's also noticeably lighter with the magnesium lowers. Not to mention, it looks really fucking good. In our opinion, it is the best looking fork ever made. <laughs> the biggest upgrade with this fork is the adjustability. If you watch our first suspension video where we went over the stock fork, you know we were not impressed with the adjustability or the performance. You won't have that problem with the Fox 40. With this fork, you have an air pressure adjustment air volume adjustment via tokens, high speed compression, low speed compression, high speed rebound, and low speed rebound. Since this is a first impression video, we can't really get into our preferred settings because we have not even scratched the surface yet, but we will do a follow up video once we find what we like. However, for now, all we can say is that with no adjustment or tuning other than a quick air pressure adjustment, off of a chart, we are impressed. That being said, let's go through who we would recommend this fork for, 
given the price. I'm going to start out by saying that if you aren't doing any serious off-roading or big jumps, you really don't need to buy this fork. If all you're doing is riding on the road, I don't know why you would spend $1,700 on this other than for the looks. Which I do understand, if you have the money and you have to have it, it does look really good. Now if you do ride off-road and you want a good improvement over the stock forks, but you're not willing to spend $1,700, then I would recommend you take a look at the Marzocchi 58. The Marzocchi 58 is essentially the same fork, except it only has one rebound and one compression adjustment each, where the Fox 40 has two for each, high and low. If you're someone that rides hard often, and doesn't mind paying a premium price to get the best performing and the best looking fork on the market, then I would recommend purchasing the Fox 40. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in others like it, please consider subscribing.